Hello, my name is Penn Macias, and this is a tutorial for this My Arizona map. My Arizona looks like this, but yours is going to look different because the artwork represents the people who are important to us and our heritage and what we love about our community. And since every one of us is unique, every one of our maps will be unique. So let's begin. The supplies I'll be using are watercolor paint, a paintbrush, a napkin, chalk, a pencil, a piece of watercolor paper, and the personal reflections PDF, which is included with this tutorial. You could also use crayons or markers or color pencils or any kind of art supply that you enjoy using. The personal reflections sheet includes the outline of our state, Arizona, as well as some symbolism for cultures that are significant in our community. Then you see some cactus ideas you could incorporate into your art and a few questions so that we can really reflect on what's important to us and what we're thankful for. The first question says, who are the important people in my life? I wrote my husband, my daughter, and my two sons. Number two says, what represents my heritage? I decided to create this piece of artwork about my husband's heritage. He comes from Mexico and his Mexican culture is incredibly important to my children. So my artwork is going to reflect his heritage. And then what am I thankful for? I wrote, I'm thankful for family. I'm thankful for the diversity in our community and the stars at night. So now we'll pause this video for just a minute so that you can reflect on what is important to you. Okay, great. Now take your piece of chalk. And if you don't have a piece of chalk, you can get the exact same effect by using a crayon, but I'll be using chalk and lightly color over the lines that you're going to be tracing onto your painting. For everyone, this should include the outline of the state of Arizona. I will also be including the Otomi and the Kokopali symbolism, which was included on the worksheet in my artwork. But remember, your artwork is unique to you, so you could include some of it or create your own symbolism. Now, let's place our Arizona shape where we want to see it on our painting. And then we will outline the state of Arizona. And check to make sure that it has transferred to your page nicely. If you have decided to transfer any of the other symbolism provided on this reflection sheet onto your painting, you can go ahead and trace that onto your page as well. And if you are tracing any of these symbols onto your painting, feel free to rearrange the placement however best fits your vision for your artwork. Now let's use our pencil to lightly sketch out the rest of the symbolism that we want to represent in our painting. My important people are going to be represented by my favorite cactuses. I'm going to represent myself as a barrel cactus. My husband is a big, strong, old saguaro cactus. My mini me daughter is going to be a smaller barrel cactus. My oldest son will be represented by a prickly pear. And my younger son is going to be represented by a blue agave. Now pause this tutorial for a minute while you sketch out how you are going to represent your important people. Now let's begin painting. You can use any shape brush that you feel comfortable with, but I'll be using a flat brush. 
I like to use a flat brush while I paint because my brush can make skinny strokes when I point it this way or it can make wide strokes when I lay it on the paper this way. I'm going to start with a bluish green for my barrel cactuses. On your art, you can use your favorite shades of green or make unique colors for your cactuses. A barrel cactus is made up of wedges like a beach ball. So we'll make that by pressing our brush skinny at the top, making it fat in the middle of the cactus, and then skinny again at the bottom. And then we'll fill in the other wedges of our beach ball barrel cactus exactly the same way. And then I'm going to follow the exact same process of making beach ball wedges to make my mini me cactus for my daughter. At any point, feel free to pause this video so that you can fill in sections of your map that apply to the technique that we're working on. Now I'll clean my brush off and begin my saguaro. If you're incorporating a saguaro into your painting, you may want to use an olive green color. I'm going to use the skinny edge of my brush to draw long skinny ribs on the saguaro. Now I'll use the exact same technique in an L shape to give my saguaro its arms. A saguaro is probably the first thing you think of when you think of the word cactus. But did you know that saguaros only grow naturally in the northern portion of the Sonoran Desert, which is right here in Arizona? So saguaros are native only to Arizona. Now I'll rinse my brush and move on to the blue agave. I bet you're surprised to hear that I'm going to color my blue agave blue. I want it to be a really light blue, so I'm adding only a little bit of color and a lot of water. If you're using watercolors, the more water, the lighter the color. The leaves of a blue agave are also wedge shape, so let's use our wedge technique and make it fat in the middle. Then we'll continue to add leaves around our agave to make the fan shape. And fun fact, blue agave produce a molasses that is sweeter and healthier than regular sugar. So the blue agave is a really cool plant that is native to our state. Now our prickly pear cactus is just a circle or an egg shape with several other round teardrops coming out of it. The last part of the cactus section I want to add is a couple of flowers to the barrel cactuses that represent myself and my daughter. The flowers are just little wedge shapes just like we made for our blue agave. Now that you've learned the cactus techniques, pause the video so that you can fill in your cactus section. Now I'm going to fill in the Atomi section of my map. And I'm choosing to fill this in with a magenta color, but Atomi embroidery is a very vibrant, multicolored design. Atomi embroidery comes from the Atomi people in central Mexico, and it represents the native animals and plants that are found in that region. Because this beautiful form of artwork is very prevalent in Mexico, I chose this design to represent the Mexican heritage that my family has, as well as the strong Mexican influence that our community has here in Southern Arizona. 
your My Arizona map may have different symbolism altogether, or you could create your own design. Now I'm going to add Coco Pelli to my Arizona map. I chose to add Coco Pelli to my map because I felt that it was important to represent the indigenous cultures that were here long before Arizona was ever a state. Coco Pelli is a flute player who is said to bring good fortune and joy to those who listen to his music. Stories of Coco Pelli can be found in many of the indigenous communities that are found in our Pueblo area. So my Coco Pelli is in the center of my map to honor the indigenous communities who stood on our soil long before we did. And as I mentioned, the symbolism on all of our maps is going to be unique based on where you came from and what's important to you. You can use symbolism provided on the worksheet or you can add your own symbolism. Now you can pause for a minute and update the next section of your My Arizona map. Now, I also mentioned in my personal reflection that I also love the Arizona stars at night. And so I'm gonna fill in the negative space on my map with some of Arizona's stars. What's negative space, you ask? Negative space is the empty area around and in between objects in a piece of artwork. So those big open spaces in my Arizona state, I am going to fill in with some gold stars to represent our beautiful skies. You might notice that the stars I'm adding to my Arizona are not traditional star shapes that you would immediately think of. This is because I am taking artistic liberty in creating a design that represents a star to me. When you look at the stars at night, the stars in the skies are not the typical five point star that we associate with the star shape. And so this is what I envision that they look like. As the creator of your My Arizona map, you can make those design decisions. And what you think the right design is, is perfect. No one can tell you it's wrong. Okay, now, if you want, you can leave your map just like this and the negative space around the map will tell your eye what the shape of Arizona is, or you could add a border to the outer edge. Either approach is fine, but I'm choosing to add a bright blue border to the outer edge of my Arizona map. Do you notice how the west edge of the Arizona shape is super duper wonky? No, it's not because the map maker was dizzy when he was drawing that side of the map. It's because in 1866, the US Congress decided the land that is west of the Colorado River would go to Nevada and east would go to Arizona. So that's how we got our wonky shape. Okay, now that we've filled in our whole map, let's take a minute to look at it and decide if we want to add anything. And if we decide that we're done, make sure you sign the bottom of your map and write the date on it. Okay, now I hope you love the My Arizona map you created about yourself and all the wonderful things in your life that it represents. Thank you.